Hey everyone, it is Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I'm here with Jim of Morbid Saints. So how are you? Good, thank you. Awesome. Well, now let's start talking about uh, Swallowed by Hell. This is the first new material you've worked on in decades. So how did it feel to write and record again? Um, good. Uh, I, I personally have been out of the band for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the band in their uh, previous state, they were, you know, playing shows and doing stuff and, and they, they, they had written some original stuff, uh, none of which is on this album. Um, but uh, I got back in the band with Pat, uh, the original singer about three years ago. And um, no, it was, it's, it's, it's good. A lot different. You know, we're, we're a lot older. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. I did actually want to ask about Pat, um, but I was going to wait and ask about this later, but I guess I'll ask it now since you brought it up because I saw you guys at Quebec death fest in 2019. And I noticed you had a different singer. Uh, were you at that show as well? Or was it, I was, I'm trying to remember who all was, playing but that, i mean it's been so many years i forget but in in 19 um that would have still been jay jay visser the other guitar player the other mm -hmm. original guitar player um he was the one who kind of kept the band going all okay. these last 15 years or so um so that would have been in 19 uh it would have only been jay was the only original member at that time huh? um and um bob Zabel, the bass player at that show, he's still the bass player we have now, and everybody else in the band is different. Um, I think the singer they had for that show would have been Cliff. I don't know his last name. Um, he would have been the singer for that show, but not. Yeah, that that was. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. That that's that was the last I think lineup that Jay had before that lineup um, kind of parted ways. And Jay took a little bit of a break and then he got a hold of Pat and myself to see if we would be interested in doing it. Um, and it, everything just worked out and it did. So we were able to um, keep Bob Zabel, the bass player, because um, he's, he's just a phenomenal bass player. He's, he's been with Morbid for a long time. He, was, he wasn't in there when I was in there in the past. Um, and then our drummer that we have now, DJ... Uh, I don't even know how you pronounce his last name. It's like Bogomu or something, something really messed up. Um, he was in Morbid Saint. He wasn't the last drummer. I don't think he might have been at that Quebec show. I'm a little vague on some of that stuff because I wasn't in the band. So I'm sorry about that. But okay. he might have actually been the last drummer. He actually was. I think he was the the drummer before it. they kind of took a break and um, decided to regroup. So we still have them and then Pat and myself, the other two original members, join back up. Awesome. And now, I guess from what you were saying and from what I uh, noticed, um, you know, listening to the new record is that, and I'll uh, talk about this more in the interview, is that, you know, this album, it really, you know, uh, you really stick to your roots with this uh, with this new record um, and I find it interesting that you know you do have a lot of the original or at least earlier members of the bands uh, who worked on the record but you also have a couple new guys so how was it um, balancing like you know your original sound versus you know maybe some of the new ideas that the other guys came up with um well one of one of the things actually when Jay had asked me to if I wanted to come back and if I had time or whatever. Um, one of the things I had asked him right away was if he would be able to get DJ, the drummer he had, the last drummer that he had, because the only other drummer I played with in Morbid Saint was Lee Reynolds, the original drummer on Spectrum of Death and Destruction System. And he was a phenomenal drummer. And and I knew to to be able to play this music, you you, you have to have a really good drummer and dj is great so that was kind of one of the things i was like well if you can get him and i knew bob was there so but the drummer really made a that's if you don't have that 
I, I'm sorry, it's not going to work, you know? And, and so, so having him and his talent, it, it opened up a lot as far as um, how we structured a lot of the songs and, and the, uh, the speed that we wanted to play at, you know, he's able to play at, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're getting old, we're still playing fast, but, but we were, it's, it's easy to write when you have somebody with that talent behind you. Um, so it didn't really change much because we, we, fortunately we've had two great, those two great drummers to, uh, write with. And, um, so it kind of, everything fell in place. The, the one thing that we really strive for on this album was because of Bob's bass playing. Um, Bob's really, really good. And he adds a lot to the music and we didn't want to cover that up. So the sound of this album is a little bit different. Um, you know, most thrash is typically really, really guitar forward. Um, and the bass is it's there, but we really wanted him to be in the mix, sit in the mix, just where you could hear everything he's doing. And I and I think um, it came out really well that way. So, for writing wise, um, we just really took into consideration the talent that we had, and and exploited it the <laughs> the most we could, you know. So, um, but it really wasn't much different, you know, not really. Awesome. Um... And now, I mean, you guys have uh, been reunited since 2010. And I mean, I know you're talking about some of the lineup changes that have happened since then, but is there another reason why uh, we've had to wait since then for a new album? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I wasn't in the band, so I only know just, you know, what, what I've been told. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I, they, 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 they did have songs. They were, they were writing stuff. They were playing new songs, um, live. Um, but they never, it, it, it they just never really, you know, that's another thing when, when we got the band back together, we, we sat down and I, and I said, my main, I, I'm not doing this just to play shows. I'm, I'm not coming back. I want to, I want to record an album and I don't want to, I, I, we kind of, as a band, we agreed not to do any shows till the album was done. And we really weren't going to play until it, the album was released, which is coming up shortly now. Um, but Milwaukee Metal Fest came up and we just we we, we kind of couldn't pass that one down. It's you know, it's 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 right here. It's Metal Fest. You know, they're bringing that back after a long time. So so we we did do that and then we did a, a show in madison for randy kastner blades of steel um which was a great show so there's only two two shows we kind of snuck in before the album actually drops so and now so now it's coming out and then with the singles you know we tried to get those out before we hit metal fest we had i think one out maybe um so um yeah i kind of forgot the original question <laughs> well i mean it was um um Plus, even though you all uh, reunited in 2010, we're getting a new album in 2024. Oh. But I think you pretty much covered it. That yeah, um, that yeah, that yeah. It's it it. I there's, I I don't can't really explain why it didn't happen. Why they weren't? Why they they couldn't just get past the you know the next step of getting it all done? Um, but we we all set our minds you know that we were gonna. That's this is what we're gonna do, and and just put playing live aside for now. Um, and we were able to do it and now we're going to, now we're looking forward to hopefully playing some shows. Awesome. Um, and now one thing I noticed about many thrash bands, especially some of the classic bands that have been, um, reuniting and releasing new music is that I feel like a lot of other bands develop a very mainstream sound. And as you said, you all stick to your more extreme and brutal root roots. So why do you think it's important to, uh, keep your core sound even when writing new music? I, I, I understand the reason why bands, veer off and go different, you know, and they'll start sounding a little bit different. Um, I think we sound a little bit different on this album compared to the other ones, but I, I think a lot of it is, is more just, we were finally able to record, have, have an album actually record, recorded and, and mixed and mastered properly. Um, Spectrum, you know, I, we, we love that album. 
um, we, you know, we, we, we appreciate the fact that it's, it is the reason people know who we are is because of that album. Um, but you know, we hate the way it sounds. We never liked the way it sounds. It's, it, it was recorded on a low budget. It was recorded live. It was, it was, you know, we had like four days we recorded that album in and, um, so th this album for us is finally what, how we want to sound. Um, do we, 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 I think we have a slightly different sound than we used to. Um, our guitars are different than what they used to be. Um, you know, we're running completely different setups than what we used to be, you know, and, and you're gonna, you're gonna change just naturally with age, you know, and, and progression, you know, you know so. I don't think we didn't intentionally try to change anything. We didn't, you know, sit here and say, we want to sound like this or sound like this. We just, this is, this is who we are and, and how we sound now. And, and um, I, I think it's pretty closely related to the original, to the earlier stuff. So, um, but I think it's, I, it, I don't know that it's, you know, you're, you, you come up with, you see stuff like, where people online will talk about like Slayer at one point, you know, had a real drastic change in their sound. Um, quite a few bands did, you know, obviously Metallica did, you know, I'm not going to go there, but, um, and some people like it, some people don't. I, I think you should, if, 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 if you have a following because of these albums and the way they sound, why would you change that? You know? So, but I understand why people do. You know. Fair enough. Um, but you did mention the guitar playing because I definitely feel you took the um the guitar work to a different level with this new album. So um well first off, uh were um like were you the main writer as far as guitars go, or was it Jay, or did you two collaborate? And if so, um how did you approach writing the riffs and the solos? Um Solo work was all done. Um, I we re we recorded a lot of the stuff. Um, we did like a lot of DI tracks ourselves. Um, so Jay, you know, Jay, I got my solos done before Jay gave them to him because you know sometimes my solos before his or he's before me or whatever. Um, so I got mine to him so that he had a kind of an idea of either how to end his solo going in the mine or, or start his coming out of my end. Um, but as far as the, like all the riffs and, and the songs, we, we started a, a WhatsApp group right away when we started writing and we would basically just record parts and send them to each other on WhatsApp. <laughs> and, and out of those, you know, and Pat would, come up with some lyrics i came up with some lyrics um and then it was just a matter of piecing stuff together and 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 making it it fit which i did a lot of that um so but it was the the guitar parts are a, a combination of both mine and jay's interesting um and now uh for this i you're releasing swallowed by hell through high roller records so how was it like working yeah. with them uh, we really like working with them. You know, we're not, we didn't sign a record deal with them. So we're, we're signed to them, but we're signed to them with a distribution deal. So we don't, um, you know, we, we, we did like a lot of musicians do a long time ago. We, we signed stuff we shouldn't have did, but you tend to kind of have no choice. You know, you're either going to sign it or you're not. Um, and it's always sounds better to sign it. Which, you know, that's that's what happens. But so we kind of lost the rights to our music for a long time. Um, and we got that back right when we got the band back together. We kind of pursued that. We ended the, we had a record deal with um, Central Media and we ended that. And we were hooked, we got hooked up with High Rollers through Century Media. And when we ended the Century Media deal, High Rollers contact, contacted us directly and, and wanted to continue to work with us. Um, so we offered them to, to do, to work on a new album and they were excited to do it, so, you know, and, and, it, and it's not like we have record labels knocking on our door or anything, you know, so, 
we we were we were more than happy to just work with them on on at how we are. It works so it works good for us because we're not. It's probably a question you're going to ask because everybody does. Um, we're not a touring band. We we all have jobs. We all have uh, families, and so for us to go on like an extended, like you know, a two, three, four months, whatever tour, it, it's it's just not going to work. So. Um, you know, and if you sign with a label, they're going to want you to do that to promote. Um, so we didn't, you know, we, we, we're at, we're at the, a point, I guess, in our lives where we, we want to just be happy with what we're, with what we're doing and have complete control over everything. No, no one's going to tell us what to do. And, and it, that's just the way we want it, you know, and, 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 I mean, we could maybe have pushed and did something, but I'm, you know, we're not, no one's ready to quit their jobs at our age so you know it is what it is but but yeah high rollers is they've been great great to work with awesome and now um and your album artwork is amazing uh you had ed repka um work with that you know the legendary uh artist and i uh he was a guy obviously you know growing up with death and 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 mega death he i mean he's done all them album covers you know and um with this album from it, it was just, it was just kind of something we thought about that, you know, since we haven't had an album out in like 30 years or whatever it is. Um, and he was real, I mean, he's still really big, but you know, he was a real big influence on, on thrash art back then. And we just thought it would be cool to have him do the album cover if we could, if we could. And, and we contacted him and everything worked out and oh yeah, we're happy we did. We're, we we're, we're honored to have him on there. So. Nice. That's awesome. Um, and now I know you were, uh, just saying that, um, uh, you're not a touring band, but for this year and the future, do you expect to play like more festivals or one-off shows or anything? That, that is, that, that's our, uh, goal, I guess. That's what we want to do. We want, we're hoping we get contacted to play for some of the bigger festivals, um, we do have one coming up in March down in Houston, Hell's Heroes. Mm -hmm. We're playing that. Um, and they were playing uh, in October. We're playing in a Czech Republic for, the, I think that's a Thrash Nightmare Festival. We're playing that. So we're, we're getting, you know, there's people have contacted us, but that that's really what we want to do. We, we prefer to um, either, you know, flying out is fine, Um but we have the means to 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 drive and, and we may do we actually have three shows i think it is coming up in uh new york in september um not one one in new york one in pennsylvania one in in washington so, and that's that's going to be like a long weekend you know a thursday friday and saturday so we'll do we'll do stuff like that where we can draw anything in in driving distance you know within you know, reason um we'll do that but yeah it's, i mean it, it sucks because we'd love to get on a tour and, you know, do that. But we're just, we're kind of beyond that now, I guess, with our age. <laughs> so that's understandable. But and we I will think, be out there. Yeah. And there's also a, such a huge demand for festivals and some of the bigger shows. So I see a lot more bands doing, um, going in that direction as well. So, um, and yeah. now, uh, well, this is the last question. You can say anything you want. You can promote the album. You can thank the fans. It's all, it's all whatever you want. Oh, there's no question. Oh, it's just, <laughs> it's just the uh, statement. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, just promote yourself or anything like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we like like I said before, you know, with with Spectrum and and the the, the fan base and. The, you know the cult following and i mean there's some crazy people out there that love that album and and um i, I mean it, we appreciate it you know and it, it's it's hard to it, it's hard to describe how that is because the album is so old and 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 the album didn't do well when we when we you know it took took 20 years for it to actually to where people actually like it um so so it's it, that's amazing so we i mean we we you know always thank the fans for that because because that if, if it would be for them discovering that album and liking it um we probably wouldn't even be here today doing this you know and and, and that's the only reason that that we are here because because there's there is a some level of interest in morbid saint um so you know like i said the the, the fans that we do have we, we 
thank him as much as we can for that we're even able to do this. Um, we hope we hope everyone likes the new album. Um, we we do. We're we're very happy with it. We 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 hope that we'll be able to please the fans of Spectrum and Destruction System, and also possibly hopefully gain some new fans. Um, so we're you know we're on we're on we have our Facebook page. We have a website. Um, we have three singles out off the album right now, and a YouTube channel with them. Um, we are releasing one more coming up in a couple weeks, I believe, will be the last single um, before the album drops on the 9th. And the album will be available on all all streaming platforms on um, February 10th. It's February 9th at midnight, so I, it's like <laughs> weird. Um, but so you, you can get it there free. You can buy it from us. We have, we'll have album CDs. We're going to have it on cassettes because people have been asking for cassettes. I don't know why, but they are. So we're going to put it on cassette. Um, so all that stuff. And we got a ton new merch to go with the album that will all be kind of available right around that same time. So um, yeah, just keep an eye out for, for right around the beginning of February. A lot of stuff will start popping up. All right. Awesome, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out this interview. As Jim said, the new Morbid Saint album, Swallowed by Hell, will be out on February 9th or 10th, one of those dates. Um, and yeah, they're going to be playing some really cool festivals and shows on next, this come or this year. It's already 2024. Uh, they all, they're <laughs> going to play some really cool festivals and shows this year. Um, I'm sure this band also has a lot of awesome stuff in the works. So keep up with everything they're doing. And thank you for watch for watching. Stay metal, everyone. <laughs>